Is Xbox trying to kill all the good press and momentum they received from their showcase back in June? Well, I think they might actually be doing that because Microsoft is hiking up the price again of Game Pass across the board. And they're making some crucial changes to allow their other versions of Game Pass so that you have to pretty much buy into the most expensive version if you're a console player. Luckily, Cloberl on Twitter posted this to kind of showcase a nice graph of what is all included with each version of Game Pass. There's Core, which is basically like Xbox Live, right? For $9.99 a month, or you can get it for $75 a year. You have Game Pass Standard, which comes with what you expect with Game Pass, but it does not come with day one when it comes to the launch of new games. But also no EA Play or Riot Games benefits as well, which I like to use. I actually like using EA Play benefits. It allows me to play Battlefield and also say like Jedi Survivor. And EA does have some good games, even though they tend to come over to Game Pass they're usually like a year or so after the launch of the game. Makes sense as EA probably wants you to buy it on their platform first before playing it over on Xbox. Also, did you know that roughly Roughly 60% of the people who are watching this channel are not actually subscribed. If you want to stay updated with all things going on with gaming, Xbox, Halo, stuff like that, make sure you tap subscribe, like also helps out the video a ton within the algorithm. But without further ado, let's get right back into those details. And no X Cloud access with this, which we do know now from Sarah Bond back when they were revealing all the information about how the inner workings of Xbox are with the Activision acquisition that xCloud really isn't utilized like at all by players. And now Game Pass Ultimate will cost $19.99 a month and it comes with all the bells and whistles that you want when it comes to your Xbox features, which is nice, especially with the Xbox Cloud gaming service, as we do know that there is that recent Fire Stick edition that came with Xbox in July, basically utilizing the Amazon Fire Stick TV stuff to be able to just open up the Xbox app and use cloud gaming as a way to play whatever games you like, which I actually would look into trying this out because it seems like that would be a really nice feature as someone like myself. I like to use my Steam Deck whenever I like to play on my PC, but I want to hang out with my wife or something like that on the couch. But is xCloud worth the extra cash? Because Cloberow points out that Game Pass on PC will be $11.99 a month and will come with all the features that you would expect on PC besides cloud gaming, which again, I'm mainly a PC player and I don't really utilize the cloud gaming service as I don't really have anything available for me to take advantage of it for the most part. But why is Xbox doing this now, especially just soon after the showcase? One month after the showcase back in June, which gave Xbox so much great momentum, kind of everyone go like, okay, we'll forget about all the layoffs and stuff you did early in the year because the showcase you had was awesome. But then Microsoft's like, we gotta hit them with some more bad news. And you have to think the reason why they're doing this big price hike. This is actually a pretty big price hike when it comes to an initial jump up to a new price. Like we don't really see this with any other kind of streaming service out there, right? Because Ultimate's jumping from $17 to $20 a month, which that's a significant little jump in price right there. And like, say like if Netflix did something like that, that'd be kind of insane. I actually looked into how Netflix boosts their cost over the years, right? If you look into this right over here, you can see from April of 2013, your standard version was $8 a month, not too bad. Then 2014, it was $9, then it goes up to 10, 11, 12, 13, up to 1550 as of January 22. But there's an important strategy of how Netflix upgrades the price compared to Xbox. Because with Netflix, you know, an extra dollar a month, people are like, yeah, we get it. Prices and changed. Inflation's a thing. We get it. And it's like an extra dollar a month. People are kind of like, eh, whatever. But when Xbox does this, it's kind of wild to think they're willing to make that huge of a price jump from 17 up to $20 a month, which is just like, that's a significant change. We're like, well, I need to kind of maybe rethink about how much money I'm spending per month when it comes to gaming, right? Because over the course of a year, that price jump that Ultimate is going to be making can be essentially the price of a brand new game. So why make this jump now? Well, I think it's mainly because we have Call of Duty releasing this year, right? The first Call of Duty to be released on the Xbox platform. So I think people are going to be a lot of people are jumping into playing Black Ops 6 on Game Pass. I certainly will be on PC. And fingers crossed that we could possibly get like the back catalog of Call of Duty games on Game Pass as well, which in my opinion would be amazing. But of course, it's all just kind of depends on what kind of content you're willing to dive into when it comes to Xbox. If this 
price jump doesn't matter to you or if it actually does. So you want to play Starfield or the new Doom game that's coming out next year or Indiana Jones or like I say Black Ops 6, Gears of War that's going to be eventually coming out, Flight Simulator, Avowed that's coming out this fall, whenever the next Halo game decides to release. So for someone like myself who's already subscribed to Game Pass Ultimate, probably shouldn't be doing it because I'm mainly a PC player. I'm actually thinking about redoing my subscription now after looking at this information. Because as a PC player, I get all the same benefits as Ultimate, I just don't get Cloud Gaming, which I don't utilize at all, so that would actually be looking for me to save money and have the same type of experience, but be on PC. But why has this big difference where I have just PC specifically compared to just Game Pass Ultimate in general? But I think it's mainly because of the Xbox console. We know that the Xbox series consoles did not sell very well this generation. In fact, both Xbox and PlayStation consoles haven't really performed that well in this generation. So I think this might be Microsoft trying to take advantage of the Xbox players who are already signed up for Game Pass and they're kind of just locked in this ecosystem if you want all the bells and whistles. If you're playing on a con if you're a console player, I mean, looking at this, you're like, I think I might just have to just upgrade to the $19.99 a month. Especially having no day one uh, access on, on Game Pass. You know, Xbox is a big thing that they're pushing. And also no EA Play and Riot Games was a big bonus as well. And the head of Xbox, Phil Spencer, even admitted this. In an article earlier in this year from The Verge, where they say that 34 million people are now subscribers to Game Pass, which is a great number. Apparently it's a 36% increase from a couple years ago. It was 25 million, so we've seen that improvement. But apparently Xbox has been kind of doing a poor job of forecasting how many people they expect to sign up for Game Pass. Because Microsoft set themselves a goal of hitting 100 million Game Pass subscribers by 2030, in which Microsoft even targeted a 73% increase in one single year back in June of 2022. Clearly that didn't happen because they managed a 28% increase. And Phil Spencer said it right here saying that he admitted that the Game Pass console sales have been a little bit slow, saying we're seeing incredible growth on PC. On console, I've seen growth slow down, mainly because at some point you've reached everybody on console that wants to subscribe. So I think this might be more just trying to squeeze that console player base the, as much as they can to get as much juice as possible from those players, especially since you already have them it tied into your ecosystem utilizing an Xbox, like you can kind of squeeze them a little bit more where it comes to the PC side of things, you have way more options out there. Like every major publisher has their own launcher nowadays. You have Steam as a major platform with great sales and a really great user experience. But what really hurts about this entire thing is that Xbox actually insisted that they weren't gonna brace up prices because of the acquisition of Activision. It was stated right here. Now, I think they kind of lend themselves a little bit of a way to get an out of this, but like, why would they raise the prices all of a sudden right before, again, like their first major release of all the new Activision titles? Well, it's probably because of the Activision merger, right? I did go through this article, I read it a little bit, but basically what they stated here is that like Game Pass prices will not increase as a result of the merger and certainly will not increase to a point that offsets the substantial benefits of Activision titles coming to Game Pass on a day and date basis. Language like that certainly gives Xbox and Microsoft an out to be like, well, you know, the industry has changed and prices need to be appropriately you know, set to where it can be financially viable, yada, yada, yada. You get the idea. But then this quote from Microsoft continues on, which kind of contradicts exactly what just happened and really what they said in this article, as well as saying, as such, any price increase would be counterproductive as it would increase subscriber churn rates. This is entirely at odds with the provisional findings assessment of Microsoft's rationale for the merger. Again, tying it back into the merger, but it's like they're saying like raising the prices because of the Activision would not be the greatest idea, but we do see the writing on the wall, like you got Activision now officially part of Xbox and Game Pass, and now you're raising the price. And now the overall price for Game Pass Ultimate, which I've been subscribed for for years now at this point, which maybe I've not utilized to the fullest, but you know, I've enjoyed it to where I, when I have and now it's getting up to $20 a month which again times are tough for a lot of people out there people don't have as much free money to spend as much as they like and it just feels like this price hike here is more a result of poor planning on the behalf of the Microsoft directors especially on the gaming side of things inquiring Activision as well like it just seems like all these decisions that might not be the best for the player 
are being made and then we are the ones you know taking the benefit you're know, taking the brunt of the bad decisions being made where it might not be the best idea to raise prices in an economy that's currently stuck right now but hey i'm not privy to all the information that xbox has with all their insights and stuff like that maybe this price increase they might see you know some subscriber drop off some new subscribers even with this new information coming out and they might try to see like well cost benefit every time we brought up a new price hike that like we actually overall gain money rather than lose it at least that would make sense right because why continue raising the prices if you keep losing subscribers but we do see the data that xbox is continuing to gain subscribers and the price still keeps going up are you a game pass subscriber are you canceling your subscription are you changing most likely what i'm going to be doing here pretty soon as a pc player let me know in the comments down below if you guys made it this far into the video which you know you're the real ones so leave like a green heart down below in the comments so i can see who are the real ones who made it to the end of the video here if you're new to the channel missing content if you recently check out these videos right here and i'll catch you all in the next one peace out